just like this main airstream. You can resolve this problem by taking a different route, and no, no ferry terminal passes by a residential area. The Staten Island Ferry leaves every, fifth, every half hour, by the way, and it's not in a residential area. The Hoboken Ferry is not in a residential area, nor is Jersey City in a residential area. It comes by, it vibrates everybody's house, even if it was just one person here complaining about it. Wouldn't you want to just resolve that problem the next day? It's a, it's a disgrace. We live down there. It's, it's, it's unlivable. You can come and stay in my apartment. You can stay overnight. You can get that little noise meter. You can do whatever you want. You will understand. Nobody's here is lying. It's a simple solution. Change the ferries. Thank you for your time. our neighbors and the community is paramount to us. And we have consistently implored upon our general contractors and our, our tradesmen to use the highest standard of care as it relates to this uh, to this project. And so with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, uh, John Williamson from Tishman Construction to talk a little bit about the situation and how it came about and more importantly, uh, how it will be resolved. Thank you. Um, I'm John Livingston, the, the president of Tishman Construction. I'm here with my colleagues, um, Jay Badami, who is the president of our New York operations, Ron Blackman, I think you know, is the project executive on the project job. Mike Goldberg, who's right here, Mike, I'm sorry, here is the uh, project director of the job from Tishman. And um, Alberto Tagobi uh, from Firma Solisa, who's the president and, and I guess CEO, I'm sorry, of uh, Firma Solisa North America, uh, which is a curtain wall contractor. Um, we're here to answer every question you have, any question you have, as minute or as difficult as you like. Uh, you know, we're here. We have no secrets. Uh, everything is open uh, season to talk about. We, um, from Tishman's point of view, we deeply regret this. Um, we'd like to see you on more social terms and not uh, come back and talk about these things again. You know, we hope that things work out the way they're supposed to work out. Um, it would have been devastating to all of us if something tragic had happened, uh, without a doubt. And, and we pride ourselves on our concern for safety and it's it's our number one priority, and we do the best we can, and it's not always good enough. And so we're going to continue to strive for that, and we're going to do what we can here. We're going to explain tonight exactly what happened in, in great detail, also in layman detail. Everybody gets it. Um, we're going to explain what we did about that. You know, right budget. What happened a couple weeks ago, about on the 13th of November, we discovered a crack on this on this uh, piece of glass, panel of glass on the 38th floor. And we reviewed it with, uh, with our current wall. Uh, contractor, a glass professional expert, uh, uh, Permis Delisa, and deemed that it was not a situation that was um, a safety concern to us. Um, it was a small, it was a hairline crack. It was a half an inch crack. Um, and, and, you know, I would have been the first, as, as probably some of you in this room know, uh, that would have stopped our job if it had presented, uh, posed a, a safety issue to this community. Um, um, over the last couple of weeks, we've experienced unusually high winds, particularly coming off the north, the northwest. You know, side of the of the building, and the crack, uh, the, the small crack on that particular panel of glass grew through vibration of the wind. And um, on Saturday morning, it uh, you know it, it, it dislodged a couple pieces, a few pieces of, of glass, and fell to the street. So, is it possible this might? I mean, if you looked at this possibility, some sort of a systemic problem. I remember years ago there was a problem with a uh, building in Boston. I was a Prudential Center or something. Yeah, glass was constantly falling out and shattering. Is there, is there something unique about the way you've done this, about the, the thickness of the glass you use, about the way it's uh, about the way it's configured that might be causing a problem that's going to plague us from now on? Every time there's a crack, then you've got to worry about that with the wind, and, and, and this is happening constantly. I think quite to the contrary. Um, I think the building is, um, and I'm going to defer to Alberto to, to discuss the more te technical aspects of the uh, of the design of the of the wall, but it's a, it's, 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 it's a very very robust building. 